Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. The Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endured to all generations. Alabama State, we are blessed today to be able to celebrate the best Congress president in the world. And the person of our chieftain, our leader, the Reverend Dr. C. Michael Washington. Those of you in the sanctuary, would you show God praise for our leader? Those in virtual spaces, show him some praise in the chat section. We are blessed today to have such a phenomenal leader. And we're thankful unto God that he spared our lives and afforded us this privilege to come together on this president's hour. Hebrews chapter 13, the word of God says in verse 5, Let your conversation be without covenants, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. As we begin this President's Hour, would you bow with me for a moment of prayer? God, you are good. You are a stronghold in the day of trouble. And you know all of those who put their trust in you. We thank you today, O oh God, and this President's Hour for your grace, your love, your mercy toward us. God, we pause right now to thank you for how you have kept us since this time last year. Since this time last year, when we convened in Birmingham, Alabama for the President's Hour, you have provided for us. You've sustained us. You've kept us, not because we've been so good or so kind, nor has it been because we obeyed all of your just laws. But we thank you this day that you just keep on looking beyond faults and supplying our every need. God, we pause to say thank you. We thank you, oh God, for this leader that you've blessed us with, the Reverend Dr. C. Michael Washington. We thank you, God, for his spirit. We thank you for his humility. We thank you for his vision. We thank you, oh God, for his leadership. We thank you for his wife, her support. We thank you, oh God, for her spirit. And we thank you, oh God, for the labor of love that she gives to our president. We thank you for the Washington Four, for these fine children, oh God, who stand right beside our president. We pray, oh God, that you would continue to bless their lives. Continue, oh God, to bless their futures. Order their steps in your word. We thank you, oh God, for the Congress of Christian Education. We thank you for this week of learning, and it is our prayer that everything that has been taught this week will serve to encourage and enlighten. God, we're about to hear from you, and we pray, oh God, that as our leader prepares to stand, that you would be with his mind as he thinks, be with his tongue as he talks, give him anointing from heaven, that he may speak the oracles of God. All that is done during this president's hour, it is our prayer that will edify mankind, but glorify your holy name. It is in Jesus' name we do pray, and the people of God said, amen. We're gonna follow a program for our President's Hour, and at this time, we will hear from our leaders, uh, our Alabama State Baptist President, the Reverend Dr. Melvin Owens, our National Congress Assistant Dean, the Reverend Dr. Edward Rogers. We will have greetings from the Reverend Dr. Vernon Swift, our immediate past president of our state convention, and afterward, Dr. Swift and Dr. Rogers will lead us in our president's love offer. They will come at this time. Greetings, beloved of the Christ of Calvary. To President C. Michael Washington, Vice President Turner and Cunningham, Dean Jonathan McPherson, Administrators, Faculty, Staff, and Students, 
and all of the supporters of the Alabama State Congress of Christian Education. And indeed, to all who share this time of worship together during this virtual meeting of our State Congress. How blessed we are again to be able to join together with each other as we engage in Christian education through the study of God's Word. Though in this 75th annual session, we are unable to gather together in the sanctuary, we are yet able to worship together in the Spirit. John the Apostle in the book of Revelation had been exiled on the island of Patmos. That's one place. Yet he informs us that he was transported via the Spirit of the Lord on the Lord's day to the heavenly realms. That's another place. So, my dears, we all may be in different locales, but thanks be to the Lord, we are able to study together to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen who need not be ashamed. While much has darkened our skies, it has not dampened our spirits or diminished our support of the work of ministry and missional efforts across this state. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Washington and Dean McPherson for the prolific course of instruction formulated for this session. It is at once stimulating and demanding as we strive to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am also grateful to each of you for what you have done and are doing as we yet deal with the effects of this last year and a half of pandemic. I salute each of you for your steadfast devotion and stellar commitment to the cause of Christ. I pray that each of you will continue to provide support for the ministry initiatives which provide assistance to those in need across our state. If possible, I also ask that you would please consider becoming monthly givers to the state convention. This allows us to give aid to requests from the varied areas, especially our beloved Selma University. On that note, it is our intent to host an in-person worship experience for our 154th annual session of the Alabama State Missionary Baptist Convention at Selma University, November the 5th through the 19th, 2021. All of that, of course, is contingent upon how this pandemic plays out. I also want to urge you today, if you have not been vaccinated, to do so immediately. No time to waste. Every life is important. I salute all the participants who have helped to make this 75th session such a rousing success. To God be the glory. Thank all of you who have labored to make this virtual session a reality. We are being blessed by your efforts. This presentation attests to the power of at work in us that we may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. May God continue to hold each of you in his care, and may he govern your thoughts, guard your tongue, and guide your feet. Greetings and blessings upon you as you endeavor to learn more about Christ. To our president, of the state of Alabama and to our president of the Congress of Christian Education and to our dean and to this great Alabama Baptist, we bring you greetings from the National Baptist Convention, Dr. Jerry Young and the National Baptist Congress of Christian Education. They send their love to Alabama and to our president uh, Dr. C. Michael Washington, and they love Alabama and want you to know that their prayers are with you as you deliver your address today. Again, Alabama is one of the greatest Congress and convention in the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated. With, its, uh, with all of its uh, churches and delegates, we are grateful for that as we serve 
in the National Baptist Convention. Again, Dr. C. Mac of Washington, this is your day and your hour. Thomas Ida, our most eminent vice president of this Congress of Church Education, Dr. Jermaine Turner, and to Dr. Rogers, and, and to uh, Vazida from Cunningham, and our most eminent president, Dr. C. Michael Washington, and to our great dean, he's the greatest dean in the world, Dr. Jonathan McPherson. Dr. Jonathan, Jonathan McPherson, he has blessed our hearts and it's always a blessing to see him and Sister McPherson come any place. And I want to welcome all of you to the Elizabeth Church family. Welcome to, welcome to Tuscaloosa. Because you are here, to ask us, you, you bring a sweet spirit in this place. So it makes a difference to have the people of God coming together. And so I say thank you and uh, we look forward to hearing our dean, our dean, of our state congress of Christian education. He's been, this congress has been honored so many times in, in the National Baptist Congress of Christian Education for being the leading. And that's because Dr. McPherson set the stage for that in Alabama. Christian ed education. We need Christian education. We need doctrine of teaching, preaching. And I thank God for that. So. So we are now to, Ron Roger would come, receive the love gift for our president. As we get ready to give, the Bible talks about better to give than to receive, and then he said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. We start out with Dr. Vernon Swift, $500. We would do Dr. Edward Rogers, $200. Dr. Walker, $200. Dr. Jermaine Turner, $500. $500. Our vice president. Doctor and and sister Jonathan McPherson, two hundred dollars. Amen. Any others? It's a glorious time to give. Let us bless this this president, and it's a glorious time. Jesus said, let us give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God love is a cheerful giver. Dr. Euro Cunningham, $200. And God is able, God is able to make all grace abound toward us. And that we always have an all sufficiency may abound unto every good work. God is able to give back to us more than what we give to, to him. All the other gifts, God bless you. Thank you so much. I see Ron Moore, Ron Spitmore from the Vice President of our convention, a pastor, President of our District Congress of Christian Education. We will be virtually meeting next the 19th and the 20th, did I get that right? The 19th and the 20th at the Bethel Baptist Church, Reverend Moore, to Reverend C. Michael Washington, $100. See Reverend McDowell coming with a check? Come on, we'll wait on you. My old pastor used to say, if you're praying and somebody come with some money, you ought to pause, because that might answer that prayer. 
Brother McDowell from the Liberty Baptist Church, who is chairman of our trustee board of our New Arundel Bethlehem District Association, one hundred dollars. Okay, it's on the board. It's on, the, and I have it on my phone. He has give a five. Bring my phone. Cash out. Cash out. Bring my phone over there. It's on my phone. It's up there. Okay, Do Reverend Dr. C. Michael Washington, cash app, dollar sign, Pastor CMW. Cash app, dollar sign, Pastor CMW. You can just cash app it to him, and also his mailing address is up there. Mailing address, post office box. 5353 three, Birmingham, Alabama, 35207. That Reverend Dr. C. Michael Washington, post office box, 5353 three, Birmingham, Alabama, 35207. Please bless our president, and you'll be blessed for so doing. Come on, Sister Swift, you got some more money? God bless you. Sister Josephine Swift, Northwest President, $100. Cash App, dollar sign, Pastor, CMW. You can mail it to Post Office Box 5353, Birmingham, Alabama, 35207. God bless you. Dr. Roger will come now and bless our offering and present it to our president. Thank you for the givers. We ask that you would multiply it as it been given and that it would bless him and his family. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, we thank you so much for the love that you have shown toward our president by way of your gifts. At this time, we will have a song by the Alabama Baptist State Congress Youth Choir. At this time, I want to ask you to please receive the Washington children via video as they introduce our esteemed president, the Washington children. Yes, my father represents the very school of 
she made it to get the work through. My dad can do the same, just about better to work on me. But my dad is a preacher, and he's a barbecue, and he should love to see people about God. He is a great dad, and give from God. Reverend Dr. C. Michael Washington is a dad, he's a leader, and he is God's child. Today, I present to you my dad, Reverend Dr. C. Michael Washington. And as he says, say yeah, say yeah, and say yeah. Why don't you please stand wherever you are as we receive the best Congress president in the world, the Reverend Dr. C. Michael Washington. Come on, show him some love as he comes. Amen. All praise and glory be to our sovereign God who does all things well. What an introduction. Let's give it up for the Washington kids. I'm so thankful to God for my family, uh, my lovely and talented, beautiful wife, Dr. Felisa Swift Washington. My gifted and blessed children, Christian, Camden, Kaysen, and Kylan, and the Bible says, bless is a man whose quiver is full, and truly, I feel blessed with the children that God has blessed me with. To our great visionary president, uh, Dr. Melvin Owens, to our first Vice President, Dr. Smith Moore, who's present today for this recording. To my father-in-law and President Emeritus of the Alabama Baptist State Convention, Dr. Vernon Swift, and the Elizabeth Baptist Church, thanks for serving as great host for this 2021 Virtual Congress. And thank you, Dr. Swift and Dr. Rogers, for leading the love offering and to all who have and all that would share your resources, so into the life of me and my family, I am truly grateful. To our conductor, First Vice President, Dr. C. Jermaine Turner, thank you for navigating us through this President's Hour, and to Dr. Ewell Cunningham, my second Vice President and co-laborer in the Lord. To Dr. Edward E. Rogers, our National Congress of Christian Education Assistant Dean who represents Alabama with class and excellence. To the women president, Sister Maxine Abrams, layman president, Deacon Alvin Moore. To all the wing presidents, we thank God for you. Uh, to my administrative assistant, uh, Sister Agnes McPherson, I thank God for your sweet spirit and your service is invaluable. To our state youth directors, Sister Alberta Perry, and to all the state youth leaders who lead our youth department with a spirit of excellence. To our general secretary, our treasurer, and all Congress faculty and staff. To our virtual Congress technology and registration team led by our advisor, Dr. Victor Harkins. To my Mount Hebron Baptist Church family, I want to thank God for your support and thank you for being one of the lovingest churches 
this side of heaven. To my mother in love and Northwest Convention Women's President, the dazzling Sister Josephine Swift. To my mother, Christine Washington, I thank God for her, for I am the man who I am today because of her. And to each one of my siblings and their families, I give God glory and praise for each one of you. And to each of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I want to thank God for our dynamic dean, the greatest dean this side of heaven, the Reverend Dr. Jonathan McPherson. And did not our hearts burn as he shared with us and challenged us with the word of God during his address. Uh, it is again that we have come this year, 2021, we have come thinking initially that we were going to be on the other side of COVID, thinking that we were going to be on the other side of this pandemic. But yet, my brothers and sisters, we still find ourselves in the midst of a storm. I need to serve you notice that this pandemic is not yet over. We are still in the midst of a pandemic. But thanks be unto God who has given us this innovative virtual platform and has empowered us to administer a world-class program of Christian education that serves and, and meets the times that we currently face. This society that we live in, my brothers and sisters, is in dire need of Christian education. This society that we live in is in dire need of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And therefore, we must heed the words of Paul that he spoke in 2 Timothy 2 and 2 when he said, That which you have learned of me, commit thou to faithful men that shall be able to teach others also. We who are the called and chosen to be witnesses to the masses must be prepared and focused on the assignment that our master has given us. God has called us to himself, and God has commanded us to move forward with his plan, his promise, his presence, his provision, and his protection. In July of 2021, we are still in the midst of a pandemic. We have not made it yet post-pandemic. That's why we have been focusing this week on pastoring, preaching, and planning at this juncture in the pandemic. For the past 16 to 17 months, we all have been navigating in the midst of a storm, navigating in the midst of a virus, navigating in the midst of a social storm, racial tensions at its highest that it's been since the 60s, a storm of violence raining down upon us. If you look at the statistics, there were more homicides by gun violence in 2020 than at any point in recorded history in America. I submit that we are in the midst of a storm. The Bible says that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. And I just believe that the world is looking at the church to see how we handle the same storm that all of us are in. Storms come for different reasons. Storms come to direct us, to develop us, and to discipline us. One storm may come, 
but accomplish a multiplicity of things. My brothers and sisters, I want to talk to you today for a few moments about moving from promise to possession, lessons in the midst of a storm. For my foundation text, since this is an address, for my foundation text, I'm going to use Matthew chapter 14, beginning with verse 22, reading from the King James Version. The Bible says, in straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side. And while he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Verse 24 gives us a conjunction, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spoke unto them and said, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, Bid me to come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw, verse 30, the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O ye of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Verse 33 in conclusion, then they that were in the ship they came and worshiped him. They came and worshiped him. And they said, of a truth, thou art the son of God. Jesus was preparing his disciples for what was ahead of them. He wanted to further develop and stretch their faith capacity. And Jesus wanted to develop sharper sight in his disciples. And Jesus wanted to develop clearer hearing. And when Jesus wanted to develop a more stable footing in his disciples, and so what he does is enroll them in the school of adversity. He enrolls them to study a faith course in the specialization school of the storm. But I got news for you. Not only did Jesus enroll his disciples 2,000 years ago, but I got news for you that Jesus has enrolled us in the same university. In case you haven't figured it out, I need to let you know that you're not ordered in the course. But when you get through this, you're going to get full credit because all of us have been enrolled on full scholarship in the school 
of adversity. I need to let you know that storms will come in our lives. Storms. Storms that will challenge our faith. Storms. Storms that challenge our ability and capability. Storms. Storms that challenge our minds and experience. Storms. Storms that show us who we are, where we are, and whose we are. Storms. Jesus constrained them. He commanded them. Jesus sent them on a mission to the other side. And just like the disciples were on the ship obeying God, going to the other side, you and I are on the ship. The disciples found themselves in a storm, in darkness, and in the midst of a storm that wasn't forecasted, a storm that was unexpected. And I think I ought to pause to let you know, which I think all of us have found out, that there are some storms that will come in our life that were not forecasted. There are some things that come and, 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 and enter into our lives uh, that's unexpected. The disciples found themselves in a storm, in darkness. The Bible says, but Jesus was on the mountain praying, the son talking to the father. And I want to submit that if Jesus prayed, that you and I ought to always pray because we never know when we're going to be confronted with a storm. The disciples were professional fishermen. They were experienced rowers. But I don't care your position, your title, your status, your pedigree. There will be some storms that come in your life that you cannot handle. In 2020, Trump couldn't handle COVID. And in 2021, Biden can't handle COVID. In 2020, Trump could not handle racial tension. In 2021, Biden cannot handle racial tension. In 2020, Trump could not handle moral depravity. And in 2021, Biden cannot handle moral depravity. The disciples were used to all kinds of storms on the sea, but they couldn't handle this one. Some storms, my brothers and sisters, will wear you out. Some storms will drain you mentally, physically, and emotionally. Twelve men all together on the ship, and not one could help the other. There are some situations that come in our lives where no one can help us but God. Some situations that come up, your money can't get you out of. Some situations that come up, your position or status can't help you. There are some situations that we face where nobody but God can get us out of. And so the pressing question that we're faced with today, because we move from one side at the beginning of 2020, but we've yet to make it to the promised other side. We are still in the midst of. And the question today is, what lessons did the disciples learn on how to make it through the storm? And I want to submit today the first thing in order for us to make it, Alabama Baptist, through the storm, is that we got to look at Jesus. Look at him. 
And I want to submit that just because you don't see him doesn't mean that he doesn't see you. He's on the mountain praying. Look at him. The disciples are now in the midst of, in the storm. Jesus intentionally comes when the disciples are in the midst of. Jesus wanted them to see him coming. But he wanted them to see him coming in a way that they'd never seen him before. Jesus is coming and he's saying, look at the storm and look at me. Jesus comes in the midst of, look at the storm, but then look at me. Look, look at the storm, what you are fearing, but then look at me. Look at what you are fearing, but, but then look at me. What you are fearing is the storm, but when you look at me, I'm on top of and walking on what appears to be over your head. Look at me. Walking on the way. And one writer said that as he was walking, the waves began to bow down and the sea became like a sidewalk. He came to them at a time and in a way that he would appear to be more real. Look at him. Walking. The Bible text lets us know that he was walking as if he would have walked past them. They looked, discussed among them themselves that he looked like a ghost. It was his deity that was showing. He was lit up with divine deity, the light of the world, walking on the water. Look at Jesus. In the midst of your storm, keep your eyes on Jesus. What you can't handle, he can handle it. What's over your head is under his feet. Keep looking at Jesus. But not only must we look at Jesus, but the second lesson that disciples teach us that we ought to listen to Jesus. Jesus walking on the water, they thought he was a ghost when they saw his deity. And Jesus says unto them, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And I need to let you know that whenever you find yourself in a storm, you need to be careful who you get advice from. You need to be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you allow to counsel you. In other words, the saved ought not listen to the unsaved. The faithful ought to not get advice from the unfaithful. In other words, if you are married, married folk ought not get advice on marriage from single individuals. Listen to Jesus. Listen to him. Why? Listen to him because he's the son of God. Listen to him because he's full of wisdom. Listen to him because the Bible declares that when his word goes out, it will never return unto him void. Listen to him because he's not a man that he should lie. He can never lie. Listen to him because one day at the Jordan River, the heavens opened up and a voice came down and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Listen to Jesus. And Peter responds. If it's you, bid me to come. I want to come walking on the water. And Jesus said, come. And as Peter walked on the water towards Jesus, 
he heard and saw the effects of boisterous. The text lets us know that when he stepped out the boat to walk on the water, that the wind boisterous blew. Boisterous. Loud. Boisterous. Like an untamed animal. Boisterous. Like a raging beast. He heard boisterous. And when he heard boisterous, he took his eyes off of Jesus. And when he took his eyes off of Jesus, because he heard boisterous, the text lets us know that he began to sing. And Romans 10 says, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I don't care, my brothers and sisters, how bad it looks. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Does not matter how the storm is raging. Never give up on Jesus. He's at his best when you and I are at our worst. He answers in a time and in a way where he gets the glory and all things will work out for our good. But if you're walking towards him, keep your eyes on him and keep your ears attuned to him. The Lord told Peter to come. And as Peter was walking, he was not walking on the water. But first, he was walking on faith. If the Lord tells you to come, that means that he's going to take care of you. Don't put Peter down because Peter represents all of us. The Lord has had to save all of us from sinking. Every person in here and every person listening to me today has had to call on his name. I was sinking, deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Oh, how Safe am I. I don't know about you, but it was love that lifted me. Not only must we look at Jesus, not only must you listen to Jesus, but if we're going to make it through the storm, we got to lean on Jesus. Lean on him. I said lean on him. I don't know about you, but I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Let the world do what it may. Let society say what it may. But I'm leaning on Jesus. Come COVID, I'm leaning on Jesus. Racial tension, I'm leaning on Jesus. Moral depravity, I'm leaning on Jesus. Let the Republicans strategize, want to overturn the election. But I'm leaning on Jesus. Far left got their opinion. Far right has their opinion. The middle has their opinion. But as for me and my house, we're leaning on Jesus. I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. I wonder if anybody knows who he is when the storm comes because I'm leaning on him he'll hold me up anybody that can walk on water I'm leaning on him anybody that can speak to the thunder I'm leaning on him if he can speak to lightning I'm gonna lean on him I'm with Jesus Alabama Baptist 
He's a mighty good leader. His presence, my brothers and sisters, is assurance that we're going to make it to the other side. He got in the boat with them. And the Bible says that the storm laid down like a lamb. He's a storm chaser. I'm leaning on him because he's a storm chaser. But not like storm chasers today. He doesn't chase storms to report on them. He chases storms so he can calm them down. He chases storms so he can speak to them and say, peace, be still. I don't know about you today, but I'm so glad that he came in my storm and spoke peace. He came one day back on Calvary's mountain when they nailed him to an old rugged cross, horsed him between earth and heaven. They, they nailed him and he hung for six hours. But thanks be unto God that he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder and said, into thy hands I commit my spirit. He died on a Friday. It was a stormy day. But thanks be unto God that early, I said early, early on Sunday morning, he started walking again. He got up, looked back at the grave, and said, grave, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Do you know who I am? I'm he that was dead, but yet I'm alive forevermore. I wonder if you know him. Have you tried him? Ain't he all right? Won't he walk with you? Won't he talk with you? Won't he tell you that you are his own? Anybody know him? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Won't he hold you? Won't he rock you? Yes. I'm about to take my seat. But I think I need to tell you, they made it to the other side. They made it to the other side because Jesus got in the boat. His presence is our assurance that we're going to make it. Come what may from day to day. God will take care of us. Anybody know him? Have you tried him? Ain't he all right? Yeah. 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 What a president, what a preacher. What a president, what a preacher. Come on, show our president some love today. How we thank our president today for the word that has come directly from God, teaching us how to survive in the school of adversity. Look, listen, and lean. Look, listen, and lean. And I believe all of us needed to hear that word on today one more time let's show our president some love how we thank god for him today how we thank god for each of you today joining us doing this virtual congress of christian education on our president's hour uh, brother president are there any final directives from you We thank God for his presence in this place today. And we thank God for all that has transpired on this week. And we encourage everyone to support our youth on tonight at 5 o'clock for our youth rally. And also at 2 o'clock uh, today, the afternoon, let us support our women convention 
and after our women's convention, let us please support our youth at their finale at 5 o'clock. Everyone, please tune in at 5 o'clock. We thank God for each and every one of you. Pray God's rich blessings over each and every one of you and pray that you have been richly filled with great teaching, equipping, and training this week in the Alabama Baptist State Congress of Christian Education. Let us all stand. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord bless you, keep you, his face shine upon you. And let us go in the grace, peace, and love of Jesus Christ. Amen.